please go ahead please please go ahead yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you thank you for the introduction first of all i apologize for this technical uh, glitches that have happened and also uh, i just wanted to mention uh, since uh, i was having cold and cough uh, until last week so uh, my voice may not be uh, proper today but i will try to speak as uh, uh, as slow as possible so uh, first of all it's very important to acknowledge uh, uh, dr ballet uh, who has uh, invited uh, uh, me to give me this opportunity uh, to speak on this uh, forum about uh, my research topic that we are doing here in uh, United Arab Emirates University. I'm uh, working here since uh, last five years as an associate professor, whereas, uh, as you mentioned, um, that I'm working in the field of microbial ecology and environmental genomics. Uh, I started working on the forest and uh, polar science, then I moved to uh, arid environment in these days. So uh, today's talk, <coughs> as I said, today's talk will be more focused on to this arid region where actually I'm working in at the moment. And uh, in this uh, today's talk, we will discuss about the two main questions that we are discussing in our uh, in our lab. Uh, first is how increasing soil salinity can impact uh, the microbial communities living in the soil and their physiological properties. And second question that we are discussing in the lab is like, how irrigation water, because you know, sometimes we have different type of irrigation water for cultivating the date palm, which is one of the common uh, crop here in the, in the Middle East. So how this saline groundwater irrigation uh, affect the date palm associated microbiome communities? Uh, because irrigation water is very important for shaping the microbiome, both bacteria as well as fungi. But in this project, we mainly focus on to the microbiome or fungal communities associated with the plant. So these are the two main questions that we will be discussing uh, uh, during this presentation. So what is uh, a global uh, dryland? So if you consider uh, the whole uh, uh, whole world, basically 41% of the land is 41% uh, uh, is the actually terrestrial area. Uh, rest is all water. And out of this 41%, 38% is actually uh, 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 area where human population can live rest area of course human population cannot leave and 44 percent of the area is actually the cropland area which includes 50 percent of the global livestock so what we can say that throughout the world we have a limited amount of the terrestrial space which is home for human population for uh, uh, animal livestock as well as for our cultivation and when we say about the dryland, uh, uh, which is the most common uh, uh, area uh, worldwide, uh, these dryland are actually water deficient, where we have uh, uh, always water scarcity uh, because the rate of evaporation is very high. Uh, since temperature is also very high here in this country, in this region, uh, uh, especially in the summer, we have very high rate of UV radiation as well as solar radiation. Uh, and we of course have very low uh, rainfall throughout the year maybe once a while we have rainfall and uh, ultimately we actually have very low uh, fertility in the soil and because of all these reasons these area are becoming less and less productive that's why we have more uh, a pressure on utilizing the other area for for uh, uh, for crop cultivation or for agricultural practices Though we already have a, a huge land proportion covered by the dryland, but in addition to the dryland, there is another issue that is soil salinization. So uh, almost 3% uh, of the topsoil and 6% of the subsoil, which is actually impacted by the salinity, which means there is a high level of salt present in the soil. And of course, when we have a high level of salt in the soil, definitely it also affects the productivity and uh, 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 productivity of the soil as well. And these uh, uh, salt impacted soil are actually spreaded approximately 100 different countries. And when we look about those countries, they are mainly located, uh, I don't know if you can see my cursor here, they are mainly located in the Middle Eastern region or in this uh, arid or semi-arid region of the world. Then another bigger issue which, cause, uh, which is caused because of this uh, uh, soil salinity is the uh, soil, uh, salinage, secondary salinization. That means when we have high level of soil salinity, then this uh, salinity can also impact the groundwater resources as well. That ultimately increase the salinity in the groundwater. And this is the groundwater which actually we use 
for the irrigation purpose. That's why uh, this is causing a secondary salinization of the soil because we are again collecting the salt from the groundwater and bringing back to the soil for the irrigation purpose. In addition to that, uh, when we look into some uh, recent data, uh, there are uh, some recent proof which has been shown that salinity is also increasing because of changes in the climatic condition. Look, for example, if you look into this uh, one panel or uh, uh, panel that is G, uh, for example, in the Africa, uh, we can see that uh, the area which is affected by the salinity is increasing significantly uh, with the time. Likewise, if you look into the South Africa, we can also see that the area which is uh, uh, which is impacted by the salinity is also increasing with the time. And this is because of changes in the climatic condition. As we know, yes, yes, please. Any any question or please go ahead. Please go ahead. Uh, okay. So uh, as we know that in this region uh, we have constantly increasing temperature and we have high temperature in this region that actually uh, uh, cause more water evaporation and leave uh, a lot of uh, saline so salinity behind in the soil. And these are the major reason why we have more uh, increasing salinity in Africa or in South America and in some other part of the world uh, because of the climate changes. So when we talk about the soil salinization, it can have a, a, a huge impact in the soil environment. It can change the soil property by changing uh, soil flocculation or dispersion of the uh, of the salt, such as calcium or uh, sodium particle uh, in the soil. So which ultimately uh, affect the ionic balance of the soil as well. Uh, and then what can happen if we have more ionic uh, imbalance in the soil? it can further lead to impact on the carbon sequestration pattern of the soil, which can lower the biomass production in that environment. And that is what is visible. If you look into this uh, desert or particularly saline soil, you will see almost no biomass in that particular area. And that is because of this ionic imbalance, which is present in this environment. And ultimately, this will cause the potential, uh, this will uh, uh, cause uh, the uh, impact on the biodiversity and we are losing our existing biodiversity from this uh, region which is impacted by the aridity or salinity. But of course, uh, we also have some opportunity in this environment that they are home to the halophilic uh, microorganisms, which means the microorganisms such as bacteria and fungi, which can grow in the highly saline condition. These bacteria, these bacteria and fungi could be useful for agricultural sustainability, for uh, for industrial purpose, because many of these enzymes or many of these properties shown by these bacteria or fungi are actually uh, uh, able to tolerate very high level of salinity uh, in the in the uh, lab conditions. So, as I mentioned, when we are trying to cultivate or uh, or increase agricultural productivity in this uh, saline environment, of course, there is a huge pressure on the plant. But luckily, if we have these kind of uh, uh, halophilic bacteria, which can ultimately help the plant to survive against these adverse conditions. These bacteria or these fungi, which we call it as plant growth promoting uh, uh, microorganisms, can either directly or indirectly uh, 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 help the plant or the host plant to uh, to counter the extremely saline conditions. For example, they can, uh, they can uh, like saline condition can produce reactive oxy oxygen species. They can produce ethylene in the, uh, in the tissues or there may be osmotic shock or uh, sodium concentration, but luckily microorganisms can counter all these stressors. And for this reason, uh, if we cultivate these uh, saline tolerating microorganisms from, uh, from these environment and we use them in the, uh, in, um, in the agricultural setting of the arid environment, we can increase the productivity of the soil. And lastly, uh, when we talk about uh, the fungi, they are also very important. They are particularly more like a dryland specialist because they can produce several different compatible solute, which can help them in surviving under these extreme conditions. Uh, they can have a uh, huge fluidity and uh, this fluidity can also increase the membrane adaptation as well. And many of these fungi are also able to produce melanin. Uh, and melanin is one of the component which help these microorganisms such as bacteria and fungi to uh, withstand extreme uh, uh, conditions, which could be like temperature, UV radiation, as well as salinity. 
lastly uh, many fungi can also produce exopolysaccharide as well and these exopolysaccharide production can also help these uh, fungi to live in the dry area or in the saline area so uh, considering all these points we started investigating uh, these different unique environment where you can see almost uh, no biodiversity exists especially if you look into the picture in the left we have this saline soil and if uh, in the picture on the right we have completely desert soil and we wanted to see how microorganisms vary between these two different environments which are completely contrasting so looking into the first picture we can clearly see uh, if you look here in the uh, in this uh, uh, right panel which is labeled as o we can see that desert soil are mostly uh, dominated by the bacteria such as proteobacteria which are the most common bacteria and uh, uh, in this environment at all three different depth l means a uh, lower depth m for medium depth and u for uh, upper layer so uh, so we can see that throughout these different layer proteobacteria are the most common bacteria in the uh, in the desert soil but when we look into the saline soil they are not only dominated by this proteobacteria but we can see a huge diversity of yes uh, so we can see yes please go ahead whenever somebody joins there will be some uh, noise so just please ignore that yeah thank you uh, okay okay no problem uh, yeah it happened normally in the uh, in the online session there might be some technical glitches that's common always uh, okay so when we when we look into this uh, saline soil which is the picture labeled as e here you can see that the diversity is much more higher and uh, uh, and it is completely contrasting compared to what we see outside in the desert soil which is dominated only by proteobacteria but here we have range of other bacteria which includes proteobacteria firmicutes actinobacteria and so on so definitely saline soil is extremely a uh, 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 halophilic environment but still it's it's a home to unique microbial diversity that can be useful for agricultural productivity uh, uh, in the arid environment then we also collect we wanted to see how a uh, microbiome or bacterial communities in this environment changes with the time so for this purpose we collected sample across a uh, different time point like t1 t2 t3 so we collected sample at uh, different different time points and so on and again we did this amplicon sequencing and we wanted to see uh, what kind of microorganisms are dominating throughout the time and interestingly what we found that bacillota or the member of bacillus are actually dominating in this environment uh, in all the season even in the summer in the winter or in the raining season we always have bacillus in the high proportion in this environment and why bacillus are so successful in this environment uh, then we did some sort of uh, genome analysis and we found that these bacillus or these bacteria have several different type of salt tolerance pathways such as uh, fatty acid amino acid and po uh, polyamine synthesis pathways and these pathway help these bacteria to thrive in the highly saline condition and also if you go into the biology of these uh, taxa we know that many of these member are actually endospormer endospore or biofilm former group and because of this ability they can also survive or adapt to the extremely saline conditions then uh, we wanted to see how microbial uh, diversity change so in the panel a which is in the left side we can see that with the time there is a fluctuation in the microbial diversity that means uh, with respect to the changes in the environmental condition or soil condition across different time there is a shift in the microbial diversity so at the time point 2 which is more like a, a winter season uh, for us the winter is around like say 25 to 30 uh, degrees centigrade so at this temperature uh, bacteria are growing much more faster and that's why we can see much higher diversity in the time point 2 compared to time 1 and time 3 likewise if you look into the panel b which is showing you uh, uh, the bacterial communities in this environment what we see that again uh, there is a fluctuation with regard to the bacterial community composition so uh, this is a simple ordination diagram which is on the right side each dot represent different sample and each cluster represent different uh, sampling uh, sampling time point and what we can see is that microbial communities does vary with the time 
so uh, the time point one microbial communities are much more different than the time point two and time point three which indicate that with the time there is a shift in the microbial uh, communities in these uh, salt flat environment then we were also interested in uh, in uh, in understanding what is the role and what is the proportion of uncultivated bacteria as many of you know that many of the bacteria we cannot cultivate and almost the success rate for cultivating bacteria is only five percentage or maybe less than that so most of the bacteria that we study these days is through the metagenomically uh, metagenomic data so one of the technique is that uh, using this metagenome analysis we can assemble the uncultivable metagenomically assembled genome or in simple term we call it as mags and these mags are the fungal uh, text uh, uh, i mean tentative fungal taxa that we can identify directly through the metagenome without cult without cultivating them in the lab so what we found that uh, in this environment almost 225 uh, uh, max we uh, we cultivate we generated and these max uh, which is showing by each different line are belonging to different taxonomic order level so that indicate that huge diversity is also present in this environment that actually we cannot cultivate in the lab and when we look into this non saline area the number of metagenomically assembled genome is much higher that means 55 taxa belong to the non saline area compared to the saline area where we have 22 uh, metagenomically assembled genome showing here by red color so the green color here indicate uh, the max recovered from non saline area the red color indicate the max recovered from saline area when we look uh, into uh, the taxonomic diversity what we found that the max which belong to helobacterials or rhododermales uh, diversity was much more higher in the saline condition or saline region whereas in non saline desert soil we found uh, rhizobales or pseudomonadales which were more common uh, compared to the saline area so we can see that there is a huge uncultivable microbial diversity in this environment and diversity is also unique between saline versus non saline region <clears throat> then uh, we were also interested in investigating how these different microbial communities are interacting this environment first of all as i mentioned these soil are biomass poor you can see uh, in the through the picture that there is almost no vegetation that means there is almost no carbon for bacteria to survive upon so definitely there is a huge interaction between the bacteria to help each other or to compete with each other and for that reason we also observed high level of horizontal gene transfer between these microbiome communities <coughs> so in saline uh, region when we look into this uh, this uh, uh, interaction or this horizontal gene transfer region we found almost 42 different horizontal gene transfer event that were actually noted between helobacterials and rhodotermales which were more common in the uh, in the saline region but if you look into this uh, this right panel where we are showing the horizontal gene transfer event uh, in the saline region and we could see around 30 to 47 different horizontal gene transfer event which were more common between rhizobials uh, rhodobacterials or uh, chelonials and rhizobials and pseudomonadales as well so we can see that there is a huge genetic exchange between these bacteria and this exchange is also different between these two regions so in case of uh, saline region the exchange is more common between helobacterials and rhodotermales whereas in case of non saline region the exchange is more common between rhizobials and rhodobacterials and chelonials and rhizobials then uh, as i mentioned we were also very keen on understanding how uh, irrigation water impact the microbiome communities associated with the date palm so as i mentioned in the beginning that date palm is one of the wonder crop here in the uh, in the middle east especially in the arid environment because this plant is highly successful in these conditions it doesn't require huge irrigation plus it require a bit of calcium uh, in the soil and it can also tolerate high level of salinity as well so for this reason we we chose this model plant to to study the microbiome communities and how it is changing 
when we are irrigating it with uh, saline uh, groundwater, which is common practice here in the Middle East. So this was the question. And for this reason, we collected a soil sample associated with this plant. We collected root sample uh, uh, associated with this plant. We collected the leaf sample associated with this plant. And we collected this sample uh, across many different regions in the uh, United Arab Emirates and in many different farms where we have uh, both uh, groundwater uh, irrigation, uh, which means which is the saline uh, water, as well as in some farm, we do have fresh water as an irrigation source. By the way, the fresh water is uh, much more uh, 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 costly here. Therefore, most of the farmer are actually relying on the groundwater, which is, of course, saline. So in this project, we were mainly interested in investigating how irrigation with saline water impact date palm, leaf, root, or soil associated fungal communities and their pattern. And for this purpose, we, we, we collected the sample, we extracted the DNA, and we did amplicon sequencing using MySec uh, uh, sequencing platform, and we analyzed the data. So uh, yeah, here. So basically, we, as I mentioned, we collected these sample across the different site uh, throughout this uh, uh, United Arab Emirates, and we selected only one particular plant species. Because if we choose uh, different plant species in the same experiment, we might get noise because plant are also uh, specific uh, to certain fungi. So for that reason, we chose only one particular uh, of, uh, plant species in this experiment. So as I mentioned, we collected leaf, bulk soil, as well as root. And then we did ITS and 16S amplicon sequencing to study bacteria and fungi associated with this plant. And then we did uh, uh, MySec sequencing and uh, we analyzed the data using Dara2 platform and we annotated the fungal communities using Unite Taxonomy. So uh, in the first snap, what we found is like uh, we found much higher diversity of fungi in the soil, which was expected. Uh, so compared to the leaf, which is showing in the green color, uh, and root, which is showing here in the orange color, we found much more higher microbial fungal diversity in the in the soil. And that makes sense because uh, soil is the source for the inoculum. So when plant is growing, we can always see higher amount of uh, uh, microbial diversity in the soil. And some of these selected microbial diversity or fungal diversity will also move uh, to the plant tissue such as root and leaf. So for that reason, we are expecting much more higher diversity uh, uh, in the in the soil of this uh, this environment. Then again, we were more keen on understanding the micro uh, fungal community composition. And again, we run the uh, ordination analysis. And in this ordination analysis, each dot indicate a different uh, sample, which is collected either from the root, soil, or leaf. So leaf sample are shown by green color. The root sample are shown by dark orange color. And the soil samples are shown by the light pink color here. And we can see that all these samples are completely away from each other, which means they are grouped together, but away from other uh, other category of the sample. So soil sample, which are much more distinct than the leaf as well as the root, that clearly indicate that the fungal community composition is completely distinct between a leaf versus soil versus root. But then we wanted to see how micro microbiome of these uh, compartment are shared between these uh, root leaf and soil and what we found sorry that the huge proportion of fungal diversity is shared between the soil as well as the root so you can see here in the red color around 32 percentage of microbial diversity is actually shared between the soil and the and the root and in case of soil 43 percent of the microbial diversity is unique whereas in the root only 14% is the unique. But if you look into the leaf, only 2% is the unique microbial diversity. And rest is shared either with the leaf and the soil. So what we can see that there is a huge proportion of unique diversity uh, related to the, uh, to the soil as well as to the root compared to the leaf. And there is a more shared OTUs between the root and the soil because these two uh, compartment of the plant are actually interconnected with each other. Then uh, we were uh, very keen on further understanding how fungal composition vary between these three different compartments. So what we see here, 
that in case of uh, uh, root we have higher proportion of uh, higher proportion of uh, 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 ascomycota whereas in case of leaf we have a higher proportion of some other fungi but uh, the proportion of ascomycota is uh, reduced further and further we wanted to see at the order level so here we get much more better picture so in case of uh, uh, in case of leaf we have a higher proportion of uh, pleosporels uh, in all the compartment which is shown by uh, this orangish color and uh, hypocrelis which were more common in the root as well as in the soil the hypocrelis is shown by yellow color here in this uh, root as well as soil and they are more common in the soil and root the reason is these are the common arid fungi because hypocrelis can actually tolerate high level of aridity and they can survive even in absence of a uh, uh, high level of moisture so for this reason they are more successful in the arid environment and soil and the root and likewise we also found uh, solid rails in the, in root as well as the soil and these are also some of the fungal taxa which is green, which is shown by this light green color here they are common saline tolerating fungi which means they can tolerate extremely saline condition in this environment and more interestingly when we looked into the function of these fungi what we found is that saprotrophic fungi are much more common in the root and soil which is shown by the red color here so you can see the red bar here as well as in the root and the soil is much more bigger than the leaf that indicate that the saprotrophic fungi which is responsible for the decomposition are much more common here in the root and soil but in case of leaf we found higher higher amount of pathotrophic fungi that means uh, these are the fungi which can uh, cause some disease to the plant and this is true because many time the date palm over here are highly impacted by uh, some pathotrophic fungi such as uh, fusarium or alternaria they always cause uh, different diseases to the plant and for this reason we can always see here that pathotrophic fungi are much more common in the leaf but they are less common in the root and soil where saprotrophic fungi are much more common for the decomposition purpose then lastly uh, we were keen on understanding how irrigation with saline groundwater is impacting the fungal diversity so overall we found that in root soil as well as leaf this fungal diversity is not really impacted much so you can see that it's almost similar uh, except in case of root there is a minor variation but again i won't say it's a huge significant variation so overall we can see that microbiome diversity is not changing when we are irrigating with saline groundwater that's interesting that there is no impact of the saline groundwater onto the uh, onto the uh, uh, plant uh, root soil and leaf but here when we talk about the diversity it is indicating that the number of species are always same but when we look into the otus when we look into the composition of these species then we found interesting pattern and what we can see that 33% of otus in the soil is much more unique and 27% of otus are unique in saline that means the otus which are present while saline groundwater irrigation are completely absent when we have fresh water irrigation and only 40% of otus are present in both the condition if you look similarly in the root as well as in the leaf we see a very similar pattern that the unique otus are much more higher both in the uh, both in case of saline or fresh water irrigation so overall this this tells us that even though number of species are not changing that's why we don't see a huge impact of saline groundwater irrigation at the number of diversity or at the diversity level but the composition the species which is present in these two different region when we have saline groundwater irrigation or fresh water irrigation is completely different or we can say that these microorganisms or these fungal uh, uh, communities are completely unique when we are irrigating with saline groundwater or fresh water then uh, we were further very keen, we were uh, also very keen on understanding how uh, saline water irrigation can further impact uh, the microbiome diversity in the soil uh, the root as well as the leaf and we could also see that yes in case of soil we have huge impact so the cluster of the sample 
where we which we are irrigating with the fresh water are much more far compared to the cluster of the sample where we are irrigating with saline groundwater this impact is also visible to the root uh, sample as well but it is lesser in case of leaf that means the saline groundwater irrigation strongly impact the soil uh, fungal communities compared to the root and leaf so leaf has uh, impact but not huge compared to like soil uh, 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 fungal communities then we also ask another question okay we have distinct communities but then who is driving these communities what are the different factors who are shaping these communities we also collected the soil and the water which we use for irrigation purpose and we analyze uh, some nutrient parameter of the irrigation water as well as as well as of the soil and what we found that the ph and electrical conductivity of the irrigation water and the soil is the most important factor or are the most important factor which are driving these communities that means because of changes in the soil ph or because of changes in the ph of the water these communities are actually distinct uh, when we are irrigating with the fresh water and saline groundwater and when we look into the leaf otus it's not the soil uh, uh, ph or uh, irrigation uh, electrical conductivity it's mainly the electrical conductivity of the water which is the major factor affecting the fungal communities in the leaf so uh, with this uh, i hope i man i managed to clarify that microbiome composition of saline and desert soil is highly distinct and salinity filtering is very important factor in uh, uh, in uh, making these different uh, microbial diversity in these two different region and also uh, in the second part of the talk i managed to convince you that uh, that uh, date palm actually hosts different fungal communities in the root soil and leaf and the diversity is much more lower in the leaf and root compared to the soil and lastly we discuss about that how irrigation of date palm with saline groundwater can impact the fungal communities and we we we, we found that uh, the pathotrophic fungi are actually increasing in the leaf whereas saprotrophic fungi are increasing in the root and soil when we are irrigating plant with saline ground water and uh, when we look into the community structural pattern of course communities are distinct between root leaf and uh, soil but the irrigation water electrical conductivity as well as ph are the main structuring factor so ultimately what we understand from this study is that of course we can irrigate these date palm uh, through the saline ground water but plant is under stress because we are uh, pouring a lot of salt in the in the soil and therefore when plant is plant is under the stress the immune system of the plant is much more lower and because of this reason a uh, plant may be sensitive to the fungal pathogen attack and that's why we also see that pathotrophic fungi are getting much more common in the leaf uh, and causing several different uh, diseases and by the way as i mentioned in the beginning many different farms are actually using this saline groundwater uh, for irrigation purpose and for this reason we are having more and more uh, fungal pathogen attack on the date palm to counter on this of course uh, we are using uh, many different uh, uh, fungicide or sometime pesticide to kill this uh, fungal uh, uh, pathogen but as you all know that if we keep using this chemical it is ultimately impacting the health of the plant the soil as well as the human and the animal who are consuming the plant product so for this reason we in another part of the study we are also working on developing some sort of microbial consortia or uh, synthetic communities that can actually help us in overcoming these challenges so that we can uh, we can control these pathotrophic fungi using some sort of natural solution without employing chemical and uh, uh, through the natural solution we can control these fungi so that it will not affect the plant as well as the soil health and ultimately it will not affect the human health either so with this i would like to thank uh, uh, my lab uh, team uh, uh, which is uh, working here on different project uh, related to the date palm the salinity the wastewater and so on uh, to my postdocs and phd's and master student who are working here on on these uh, different project actually they are the workforce who are generating this data which i presented here today uh, and thank you uh, uh, again uh, for the invitation and thank you for your attention
Thank you, Dr. Sunil Bandra. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, that was a 